welcome to the Asylum. And now, your hosts, Rick Flieger and Rick Briggs. Ooh, finally, the weekend, Rick. It's the Asylum Fantasy Sports Show here on the Full Time Fantasy Network, fulltimefantasy.com. At Full Time Fantasy, and of course, you can check us out at AsylumFantasySports.com, at Asylum Football on the tweeters, and get those last minute questions into the mailbag, AsylumFootball at gmail.com. Rick, week seven, and the first rendition of several to come of bi week hell is upon us. Yeah, and it's very significant fantasy wise. It affects a ton of lineups where you have Carolina, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Tampa Bay. I mean, just right off the top of your head, you got three RB ones, right? In um, you know McCaffrey, Chubb, and Connor out the window, man. Chris that's, Godwin, that, yeah, Godwin, Mike Evans, Evans, OBJ. You got Jarvis Landry, um, Juju for what he's worth anymore. It's just, yeah, ouch. Kyle just, Allen's been a right? start, you know. Um, then, then you have um, Greg Olson, tight end, you know, top ten tight end fantasy. So, I mean, yeah, big defense is on top of that. So it's it's going to be a rough one this week. So, oh, let's get right into it. It's Friday night, Rick. Pitt's playing at Syracuse tonight. I'm more interested in that than talking to you, so let's uh, let's get it over with, I guess, is what I'm saying. I'm more saying. interested in drinking a glass of water than talking to you, but that's beside <laughs> the point. And we by, have to do this stuff water, for, you for mean our dozens of fans. <laughs> dozens and <laughs> dozens of Asylumites out there. All right, let's get right into it, Rick. Starts and sits. Why don't you just give all of your starts? We'll do it that way. I think that worked better last week. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We'll start with quarterback. Uh, I'm going uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. If you happen to have a guy that's that's banged up and um, you need a, a quarterback start, I think they're going to have their way against Washington, who is 20th against the pass and even worse against the run. San Francisco got a tight defense. I think Jimmy G is going to have a good day. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I was being polite to wait on you, and we're moving to running back. You just keep Again, going. we just mentioned all the uh, fantasy stud running backs that are out, leaving some people short. If you even have injuries, too. Look, it doesn't look like Todd Gurley's going to be playing. I think Malcolm Brown, you get him in there. I think the Rams are going to feed him the ball. The Atlanta defense is getting shredded week in and week out. I think he's a, a, a sneaky start if you need a running back or a flex play. And wide receiver, get Michael Gallup in there. Amari Cooper's kind of <laughs> nursing that thigh. And um, I think he is... I think he's a must start anyway, but if you have any doubts, I don't think this is the week. Oh, I thought I was being clever with Michael Gallup, Rick. We we always overlap. I didn't <laughs> think it'd be that one. I thought I was being clever. I was being clever, but yeah, at best, Amari Cooper's banged up if, if he even ends up playing. Right, exactly. And yeah, you can move the ball on that Eagles offense uh, or defense. We will will agree there on the wide receiver. Quarterback position, Rick, I debated if I should put myself out there like this. But the heck with it. it. I'm going to do it. Go for it. Coming off of a massive 78 yard performance in week six, (laughs) but going up against what's quickly becoming one of the more pathetic defenses in the National Football League. I'm going to recommend, Rick, this week, Jared Goff in Atlanta taking on the Falcons. It's got to get right, doesn't it? it I think so. Has to I get think right. as a safe spot start, quite frankly, I mean, this Ram offense has to pick it up, right? It, has to. It, 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 you've got no choice. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's at or the season's over. So. And, and they are seventh in the league in passing right. despite that 78 yard performance last week. Right, yeah, so ooh, I got distracted. I put the phone Yeah, down. ooh, Here, look, a butterfly. Light. Yeah, that's big, something shiny. That's all it takes, <laughs> and I look away. Yeah, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I do a show with a crow. Basically. Yeah. But I have fun. Yeah. All right, running back position. I like that, uh, like you, I like that 49ers matchup against Washington. I think a real nice surprise coming back from that injury. I wondered how he'd fit in. Tevin Coleman's looked good in the limited work he's had there, had coming back into that 49ers offense. And I think he could feast on this pathetic Redskins defense. So, oh, no you know, doubt. here's a guy. And let's not forget, Mozart is hurt right. as well. So 
I've got him floating on a lot of benches. Haven't had the guts to pull the trigger yet. I think this is the week I finally do it, especially with the likes of James Conner, Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey. With those three out, there's a lot of room for Tevin Coleman in your lineups. All right, Rick, who you sitting? Who you done with? Had it with? Sit down and zip it, which is tough to do in these rough bye week times. Yeah, it is. But yeah, you know, not that I'm done with him whatsoever. I think he's done a magnificent job. But I, uh, I think this week Teddy Bridge. Bridgewater is a great sit. You know, while in my mind he's been spectacular in the absence of Drew Brees, the Bears are coming off a bye. Drew Brees is ready to come back. I Something just tells these old bones right here that you better find a better option because I think, I think it's going to be kind of lean times for Teddy this week. Yeah, yeah. I think even as a two in a, in a super flex, I don't think I'm messing with Teddy Bridgewater. Running back. Um... The Saints' run defense is 14th, but moreover, Chicago has not been able to get either Montgomery or Cohen going. David Montgomery is a sit until something happens in that offense where they start moving the football effectively with a run game, and he's the runner. As simple as that. He's another one coming off my hissy fit of everybody taking victory laps with Curtis Samuel's above average game last week. It's not going to be this week. I agree with you. Montgomery's going to have one of those at some point, and these same trolls are going to do the same thing. Can we just admit either Montgomery ain't that dude or Nagy ain't that dude that it's just that's not the way that offense is going to roll? I agree. And a wide receiver, I was going to caution people for expectations with A.J. Green, but it doesn't look like A.J. Green is going to be playing. Right. And all this rumor of him coming back is all poo-poo. So I, I tell you what, 46.6 yards or yeah, yards per game. And D.D. Westbrook has been oh, horrific. Pathetic. Has been terrible. And you know what? Believe it or not. Jeez. <laughs> that, that's just pathetic. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite words. But believe it or not, the Cincinnati defense has allowed only 4.3 catches per game to slot receivers. So, I mean, here you have a guy that is only averaging 46 yards a game to start with. Right. And Cincinnati is really about the only thing they're good at is limiting the slot receivers mm-hmm. this year. Sit D.D. Westbrook. Yeah, not, not going to be pretty for him. All right, quarterback, my boy, Rick, my boy, I hate doing it. I don't like Matt Stafford going up against the Vikings this week. The Vikings are playing a good little brand of defense right now. You are fake news. Yeah, I don't believe you don't like Matt Stafford. Not I, this just, week. I'm not just, this week. Man. I'm actually going to start his opponent, Kirk Cousins. Oh bad, I tell you, <laughs> Matt's getting mad now. Well, and, and he, he should. I shouldn't bail on him, but I just I don't like the matchup this week. At running back, I talked about it at the end of the show yesterday, Rick, with uh, Melvin Gordon. I just don't right. think he's not fully – I'm I'm going to guess, and I don't know this. I'm going to guess they learned a lesson last week that the ball, the offense runs better as it's constituted in 2019 through Austin Eckler. Melvin Gordon's going to get his touches, but till I see him break out, till I see them be able to line up and do the things Melvin Gordon does well. I'm sitting there. I don't want anything. I know you waited a long time. You said you took up that roster spot for a month. You're dying to get him back in there. I just don't think it's there yet. At the wide receiver position, Rick, somebody who for no particular reason is quickly becoming one of my favorite players in the National Football League, but I think is going to have some struggle this week. It's going to be Terry McLaurin going up against the 49ers. Yeah. I love the kid thinking he can be a star if they can ever get even some level of competence in Washington going to be a big star but this week going up against that Niners defense who is just studly it's kind of fun to watch these 49ers doing it the way even I knew football growing up and certainly the way you know it, where they're just running the ball and playing defense it's kind of fun to watch and just dominant yeah. on in those two aspects and I think McLaurin he's really the only thing you have to take away right now in that Washington offense I think they have the ability to do that I agree. All right, well, let's get into them. Game picks, Rick, as we talked about. Browns, Steelers, Bucks, and Panthers on a bye. We will start in Atlanta, Rick, as the Rams head to the head down to the dirty south, giving three to the Falcons. And, and this is one of these, you just think a shootout's going to favor Matt Ryan. Is it, I mean, it, you would think. It didn't favor Atlanta even in Arizona. <laughs> and... 
I tell you, I like the Rams. I think they get back on track against this defense. Um, I, what'd you say the line was? Three. Um, Atlanta's getting three. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have the Rams 37-31, so I have them winning and covering. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, I thought this line would have been much bigger, as bad as the Falcons have been defensively specifically. I know Matt Ryan's getting it done. That offense can move the ball. And I expect them to do the same this game, but they just cannot stop anybody. They look bad. Giddy, only having to give up three, even in a 1 o'clock East Coast game for an L.A. team, feels like a value. So I'm just going to lay it here. I got the Rams 34-27. I'll take them by a full touchdown. All right, Rick, this one surprised me a little bit, even as pathetic as they are, is the Dolphins getting 17 in Buffalo. Let me say that again, getting 17 in Buffalo. That is a ton of points, and I'll be honest with you, Miami's bad. Oh, they're real bad. But I don't know if Buffalo's offense is geared for that kind of just explosiveness. I, I, I had them winning easily, but I had them winning 28-16, so I'm going to take Buffalo to win, but I'm actually going to have the Miami Dolphins cover, and I believe it's the first time this year. Yeah, yeah, it, it will be, and, and I'm thinking the same thing. The only way I envision Buffalo covering this number is one of two ways. Number one, with your boy Fitzmagic starting, he could throw four or five pick sixes. All right, so either that happens or they have to win this game 21-3. to which is conceivable, but it's just not often, even as pathetic as Miami is, that an NFL offense gets held, gets shut out, or gets held to a field goal. It's, and we've seen a million times Ryan Fitzpatrick get two touchdowns right. when they're already down yeah. by twenty four. He is the king of garbage time, right? And so that's what I see. This just this to me has backdoor cover written all over it. So I'm with you. Clearly, the Bills are going to win, and the Bills are going to win easily. The, the Bills are a playoff team, and it's always fun to say that. But seventeen's just way too much for that team the way they're constructed. I got the Bills here by ten, twenty three thirteen, so that's Bills with the Dolphins cover. All right, the Jaguars laying three and a half on the road in Cincinnati. And this this is kind of a, a strange game to pick. On on paper you think, well, Jacksonville's gonna truck them because Cincinnati's terrible. Right. And then you stop and and look at some of the games that Cincinnati's had where they get blowed out by Pittsburgh, yet they play Seattle to one point in Seattle. And I dare say I'm going to jump on Minshew Mania one more time. And I'm going Jacksonville 30, Cincinnati 24. So I'm going to have Jacksonville win and cover. Yeah, I struggled with this one more than I should have. And then then I just stopped and thought. I said, Rick, again, we talked about this before. That's what I call myself here where, when I'm at home is Rick. I said, the Jaguars are just a way better team, even with Gardner Minshew, even with Jalen Ramsey out there the Cincinnati Bengals. They're pathetic. Jaguars run away with this one, so I got them winning and covering 26 to 10. This is a weird line, Rick. I thought the Vikings laying only one and a half at Detroit, which tells me on a neutral field, they think Detroit is a four and a half point yeah. dog, which is about right as far as I'm concerned. I, I've got Minnesota winning 31 27. Now, this comes with a caveat that they let Kirk Cousins and this offense do what they've been doing the last couple right. of weeks. Right. Um, if they go back to that conservative stuff, which I, I number one, I think they're going to have a mutiny on their hands with the wide receivers as we discussed <laughs> the last couple leave. of weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Weeze out, which is starting to be the trend. You don't want to play, you just quit. Yeah, you know, just I'm hurt. Mm. <laughs> but I like Minnesota thirty-one twenty-seven, so I'm going to have them winning and covering. After that Monday night screw job that the Lions took against the Packers yeah. last week. Here's where I find myself. One of two things happens here. Either they circle the wagons and say, never again, we've been wronged, we're mad, it doesn't matter who we're playing, we're going to take it out and prove that we're not the same old Detroit Lions. That's one thing that could happen. The other thing that could happen it's is the same old Detroit we're Lions. the same old Detroit Lions. we got another bad break. Because this happens to the poor franchise every year. Something wacky like this happens. And they fold up. I'm going to go with history here. A small part of me, and I don't know if it's just 
just the man love I have for Matt Stafford or what it is somewhere deep in the sub cockles of my heart tells me that this is a different Detroit Lions team. But until I see Let's go. It's got it is, it is. <laughs> But until I until I see this is a different Detroit Lions team, I'm gonna go with the same old Lions. So I'm gonna ha- have them folding here, Vikings win and Vikings cover. All right, Rick, the Raiders getting four and a half in Lambo. Yeah, and I don't think that that's going to be enough. I, I really like what John Gruden's doing with Oakland, but um, some, there's nothing spectacular about Green Bay. Well, you, especially this week, they're <clears throat> going to have no wide receivers. You could go up and, and play the Devontae wide Adams position. is not going to be playing. Uh, Jerome Allison doesn't look like he's going to be Andy playing. Andy Scanling hasn't been practicing. He they hasn't been all practicing. Up. Exactly. And I still think that Green Bay is good enough to, to win this game. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I've got Green Bay 34, Oakland 28. Yeah, I mean, this one was so easy when I thought Devontae Adams was playing. With, it, with him being out... I know. I I struggle with this more. I just I don't see Aaron Rodgers losing in Lambeau to Derek Carr and into the Raiders. It was a nice win they had over in London. That feels more fluky than anything. I don't feel good good about this one, but I'm going to lay the four and a half and I'll take the Packers here twenty nine seventeen. But I boy, just when you have no wide receivers, is Aaron Rodgers good enough? I guess we'll find out. All right, Rick, this is probably the game of the week, the one I'm looking most forward to. The Texas at Colts, this one's even, so we can just pick pick a winner. Uh, it's a good thing it's even to find a cover because I've got Houston 28, Indianapolis 27. It, to me, it's a coin flip. Uh, Colts coming off a bye, Marla Max. You know, had that a week to get that little ankle tweak healed up. You know, they, they're pretty healthy coming out. Houston just seems to be getting it done. Close games, but they're getting it done. I'm going Houston 28-27. I agree with everything you just said. And you're going to take Colts. You left one important part out. They yeah. play in the AFC South. I have watched enough of the AFC South the last several since Peyton Manning went away to know that when a team gets on a roll and they they play another team in the division, you promptly throw up all over your shoes to ensure that the winner of this division is 8-8. Eight and eight. So I agree with everything you said about the Titans. History tells me this is going to be ugly, field goal laden. There's going to be a safety in there. It's going to be a horrific game to watch. And the Colts are going to win it, so I got the Colts here, nineteen to seventeen. Okay. All right, Rick. The Cardinals getting three at the Giants, and that is surprising. I think now Barkley is going to be playing, which I'm sure had a ton to do with this line. Evan um, Ingram back. Sterling Evan Ingram Shepherd back. Still out. I had the Giants in a mild upset. In my mind, I think it's a mild upset. I have them winning 24-23. So I have the Giants winning, but I'm going to have the Cardinals cover. Yeah, this one was a tough one, mainly because Kyler Murray against bad defenses has looked great. He's looked pretty good overall, but against bad defenses, Reed at the Atlanta Falcons has looked tremendous. And last time I checked, the New York Giants are a bad defense. I just feels like to me Daniel Jones is a little further ahead, and Saquon Barkley is a little bit ahead of David Johnson, and Evan Ingram is a little bit ahead of anybody save for maybe Larry Fitzgerald that the Cardinals have. So I think two bad defenses. I think the Giants just have more on offense. I think Daniel Jones is just a smidge ahead of Kyler Murray right now. So I, I like that line. I actually had it a field goal. I'm going to bump this up to the Giants 21-17 because we, we don't push here. That's a punk move. So I'll take the Giants and to cover. But by, And Patrick uh, Peterson back for Arizona. All right, Rick. 49ers laying nine and a half on the road on the East Coast in Washington. I normally don't like these cross-country trips. Um, it usually favors the home team, obviously. But I think San Francisco is just a much better team. They're, they're a complete team, a brutal defense. They've got a great run game. And Jimmy Garoppolo can certainly pass, as we've seen. Um, I like San Francisco 34-17, so I have them winning and covering. I struggled with this one way, way more than I should have. That is just so many points. For a team coming west to east, playing at 1 o'clock, 
who isn't a high-powered offense, right? I, I think to cover that, you're almost counting on a defensive touchdown or, again, counting on the Redskins not being able to score at all. I don't think that's going to happen. Boy, I got a sick, sick feeling in my gut when I say this, Rick. But obviously, I think the 49ers win, but I'm going to have them cover. I'm going to take have the Redskins cover. I'm going to take the Niners here 24-17. to 17. I already regret it. All right, Chargers, you Rick. You are fake news. <laughs> Chargers, Rick, catching two at Tennessee. You know, and this, this game here is – you said Chargers are catching Chargers two. Chargers plus two. Wow. Yeah. Now that is that to me is phenomenal. Um, look, Hunter Hunter Henry's back. We know the Chargers are banged up. They're not looking good. We actually discuss a little bit. We'll get further into that as as the year goes on, and maybe even after the year's over about Philip Rivers' future. But San Diego's still a better team, right? I mean, look, it's still Phil Rivers, even though... Well, San Diego may have been a better team, but are the L.A. Chargers a better team? The L.A. Chargers seem to be... Must they be the location. Suck. Yeah, they they must be San the Diego location. Chargers Move back good. to San Diego. Well, that's definitely what they need to do. I still think the Chargers are a better team. I'm going the Chargers, obviously, with the points. I think they win outright 29-20. Yeah, I think this is a horrific game to watch as well. This, this has got all the hallmarks of a 13-10 16 to 13 kind of game but either way I think the Los Angeles I almost did it now the Los Angeles Chargers are just the better team even as good as that Tennessee defense is you're right Hunter Henry's a difference maker here he will enable them to move the sticks a little bit enable them something in the red zone so it's close it's ugly I get the Chargers by a field goal well it doesn't matter I, mean, even, I don't have even to if cover you that's take, an outright win yeah even if you take the run games as equal with Henry and the right. mess they have with Eckler and Gordon Hey, Keenan Allen, right? Phil Rivers, Mike Williams, um, the Hunter Henry, of course. You, you Versus look at Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill and Corey Davis, right? So, I mean, exactly. <laughs> and Delaney Walker, who is starting to get a little disgruntled, I believe. Yeah, I, I don't blame him. All right, Rick. The Saints getting three in Chicago at the Bears coming off a bye. Yeah, and um, my sit. For quarterback this week was Teddy Bridgewater. I think he's going to have a rough time. I think it's going to be a really close game because New Orleans is a powerful team. Chicago's got a right to ship a little bit. I'm going Chicago 26, New Orleans 24. So I'm going to have Chicago winning, but I'm going to have New Orleans cover. Ooh, you got the Saints with the cover. I just think, look, it's been a great story what Teddy Bridgewater – and there's other pieces of the offense. They couldn't have asked for anything better no, out of him. No, they're sitting. They have not lost a game since Drew Brees went out, mainly on the back of that defense, and, and that's just fine. The Bears coming off the bye, coming off a collapse, a complete breakdown to a team they never, never should have even been playing with them, let alone losing two over in London. Look, the Bears just got to have this one. I just. It's it it's just too much, Rick. I'm not going to overthink it. I got the Bears here winning and covering. I'll say 26-20. I still think it's a fairly close game, but I think the Bears win this thing and cover it. All right, Rick. Here's a tough line, boy. If this is, if this was for real money, I wouldn't be touching this one. The Ravens getting three and a half in Seattle. I tell you what, I don't think that the Baltimore defense that we've talked about. I don't think. I know it's not is the Baltimore defense that we've come to expect. And, look, Baltimore's – they're going to start getting into the meat of their schedule now. And, and that's one thing that a lot of people may not take into consideration. Seattle is playing good. I, th- I think they have the best quarterback in the league on their team in Russell Wilson. Oh, absolutely. Simple as that. I mean, I, I Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes, I like I – like, Russell Wilson. I think Seattle is a better team, and I think they're going to prove it. I mean, I'm just pulling up here while I'm kind of stumbling a little bit. Here is Baltimore is getting into their week. They've played Miami, Arizona. Of course, they played Kansas City. Yeah, Cleveland. Lucked one out against Pittsburgh. And they played the Bengals. Coming up, they have Seattle. New England. Okay, the Bungles. Houston. Rams. Ajayi. 49ers. I don't know where that Ajayi come in. Buffalo. 
That's a tough one to run. The Jets, we don't know about now with Sam Darnold yeah, we'll coming just go back. Ajayi. And then Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Long story short, Seattle 32, Baltimore 27. I have Seattle winning and covering. You know what I find interesting about this game? These two teams are almost like mirror images of each other. Russell Wilson, much better, much more seasoned. But him and Lamar Jackson, kind of very similar quarterback. Sure. Very similar running game. Very similar and really kind of no-name receivers who make right. plays. Def- once great defensive squads who aren't great anymore and give up yards. It's it's really fascinating. So what it comes down to is Russell Wilson's been doing it longer and doing it better. Lamar Jackson's on the come. Russell Wilson's already there. And I buy into that 12th man, that whole business, going to Seattle. That's a tough ask for a young quarterback. So I wish it was three. I'd feel better about it that half point. They kind of stuck it to me a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the uh, take the Seahawks here by a touchdown, 34-27. Should be a really good football game. It certainly should. All right, Rick. The Eagles plus three at the collapsing Cowboys. I tell you what. Here is here are two enigmas. Yeah. Um, Philadelphia. I don't know what to make. They're obviously they're banged up on defense, offense click sometimes it seems and then you know I, I don't know what to make of them you don't know miles sanders like you said that now maybe this is they're figuring it out a little bit right jordan howard can be the batter ram a little bit miles sanders will use him out in space where he's really good dallas has been exposed yeah it, really there, there's no question about that likely no amari cooper like yeah exactly likely no amari cooper i like philadelphia um I think it's going to be a close game. It's a, it's a NFC East, 34-31. Oh, so you predict a push. What a putt. Oh, was it three? I thought you said three and a half. No, three. Just three. Bump it up. You know what? 34-32. Ooh. I'm going to have Dallas cover. Oh, look at you hedging your bet. What a weenie. <laughs> All right. I just call them like I see them, bub. Everything about this game screams Eagles to me. They're better coached. Better, I can't even say. Better wide receivers, especially with Amari Cooper over. I just, I hate this NFC East, Rick. So when everything tells me that the Eagles should win this game, that kind of tells me the Cowboys win this game. I hate the line because it's going to be a field goal game, exactly. right? There's just simply no doubt about it. I'll take the Cowboys and the cover. Look, they've been exposed. They're not as good as they looked when they were whooping up on Miami and whoever else they beat, the terrible teams they beat in those first three weeks. But I don't think they're lose four in a row bad, so I'm kind of persuaded by that as well. Like I said, it's going to be a field goal. I'll take the Cowboys in the cover here, 28-24. I just, but good luck. I hate predicting this, this NFC, so unless Washington's involved, then it's pretty easy. All right, Rick, Monday night football, the Patriots lay in 10 in New York against the Jets. This one here, three weeks ago, I'd have laughed at that. Well, three weeks ago, it would have been 24. Yeah, exactly. Sam Darnold has really um, made his presence felt. And I still think New England's a better team. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, you have Darnold, Robbie Anderson all of a sudden cut loose and look good. Um, Le'Veon Bell's got to get it going, and they need a solid run game, not just Le'Veon Bell catching some passes. N- New England's better team. I'm going 35-24 New England, so I'm going to have them winning and covering. Yeah, Patriots 41-9. I don't even need to discuss it. Let's get into it. <laughs> You've got mail. Ajayi. I just miss it, Rick. <laughs> I just miss it. He needs to get back in. <laughs> he needs week. he needs to be back in football. And uh just came out today, or excuse me, when was this? Oh, there's the day. It was late Thursday, I guess. Um that although he didn't practice. Devontae Adams says the sprain right toe feels a million times better. 
So there's still hope. Oh, all right. Well, I hope so. That affects me in about five leagues. Yeah. Okay, Sean writes, and this is a pretty uh, straightforward one, Minshew at Cincinnati or Rivers at Tennessee? Yeah, Minshew came back to earth a little bit last week, but I don't like what I saw out of Phil Rivers. Don't like that Tennessee matchup. But let's go Minshew Mania one more week. Why not? All right, Trevor writes, half-point PPR, pick two. Robbie Anderson. Okay. Terry McLaurin. Oh, no. Okay. Dee Dee Westbrook. Oh, no. Michael Gallup. Good luck. Well, I think Gallup's a, a yeah. shoe in. Gallup's a shoe in, and you want to. Westbrook's been awful, and Anderson and McLaurin just have terrible, terrible matchups. They do. I'm not screwing around with the Patriots defense right now. I, I ain't doing it. So that takes Anderson out. Takes Westbrook just stinks. So it's McLaurin by default to me. I think he's got the best chance of getting the end zone. If Robbie, An- if if the hoodie determines, other than Le'Veon Bell, that Robbie Anderson's their best offensive weapon, he won't sniff the football. So <laughs> for me, this is Gallup in, in McLaurin. Okay, I, I I'll have to go along with that. I, I like Robbie Anderson's potential. Of course, I liked that at the beginning of the year before Darnold got sick and. You know, he disappeared, which is surprising that that a guy that you think could be a great talent, you don't have a quarterback back yeah. there, it doesn't really much make, matter, does it? Makes a big difference. Chris writes, do I start Goff or Wentz? To me, against that Falcon yeah. defense, you have to go Goff. Yeah, Goff was my quarterback start this week. Wentz, I think, will have a decent week, but, yeah, I like Goff. It's, it's tough to say. I know it's tough to talk about right You're now. You're right. But, Okay, blow it up, baby. All right. Sherm writes, I have a trade question. I was offered Tevin Coleman and Stephon Diggs for Dalvin Cook and Devontae Parker. It's half-point PPR. My running backs are Cook, Eckler, Gore, and Chris Thompson. My wide receivers are Parker and... Michael Thomas, Tyler Lockett, D.D. Westbrook, and Muhammad Sanu. All right, I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to shore up that number two running back position. But if I can be on a team with Dalvin Cook, Michael Thomas, and who was the other? Read those wide receivers again. There was a third one. Lockett. Lockett. If I can have those as my big three, I'll play matchups. I'll hunt around. Maybe Darius Geis is out there if you've got a Chris Thompson when he comes back. I'm not giving up Wait, Dalvin Cook. It's just simple no, as that. He has Chris Thompson. So, right, that's what I mean. You can get yeah. a Geis to replace him. Right. I get what you're trying to do. Dalvin Cook is pretty much untouchable. And, and Te- Tevin Coleman is a nice supplement, but it doesn't replace a Dalvin Cook. And Diggs, he's had that one big game. This, right. this, this cat's selling him high. I mean, so don't yeah. pay that and premium that's price. that's real yet. high. That's exactly, high. I agree. So, Sherm, no. Okay, I gotta say, it's Raul. <laughs> really? I'm going to guess. Yes. But well, what else could it be? Raul, R A U L. I think that's Raul. Yeah, it's no. kind of funny. You put a P in front of it. It's Paul. So I mean, I don't know. That's a good point. We're calling him Raul. Yeah, <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Raul. Okay. I need a wide receiver and a flex Me in PPR. Too. All right. So basically, we're picking two, but one must be a wide receiver. I'm with you. Frank Gore. Okay. Robbie Anderson. Ooh, there he is again. Yeah, I know. We had that big yeah. week and then right into an awful matchup. Sterling Shepard. Royce Freeman. Marvin Jones. All right, so Sterling Shepard isn't going to play. I don't think he's completely yeah, out of that concussion protocol. He's been practicing, but they don't expect him to play. So i got to have a wide receiver. So that comes down to Robbie Anderson or Marvin Jones. I know he's inconsistent. His matchup isn't much better, but his quarterback is. So I'm going to take Marvin Jones and – I just wrote Freeman. Was it Royce or Devontae? It's Royce. Well, Royce played last night, so let's assume he didn't play him. Uh, you know what? Well, yeah, if he did, he went against my advice because that's right. I Frank Gore's going up against 
Um, oh, yeah, he's playing against Miami. Yeah, this Miami. is Thorin yeah. Marvin Jones. Probably. Yeah, exactly. So I hope you didn't play Royce last night. Get those emails in quicker, dum-dum. <laughs> Raul. It's Raul. Raul. That's Raul. what we're going to say. All right, Cameron writes, I have Olsen on a bye. And it's PPR. Oh, I hate tight end questions. They're all so bad. This one to me, I mean, it's not even a, really a question to me. Eifert, Ebron, or Witten? I mean, as pathetic as Ebron's been. I think he, this is Witten. Oh, I think it's slam dunk Witten. Yeah. I mean, Eifert hasn't been over 30 yards no. a game this year, and Ebron can't catch a cold this no, year. he's back to being Eric Ebron all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Witten. I can't believe I'm saying it. It's Witten. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Rocco writes <laughs> Rocco. I was offered, here we go again. Guy selling high, baby. I was offered Stefan Diggs for Chris Godwin in a half point PPR. I am three and three. Godwin's damn on it, a bye. Damn it, damn it, damn it. And playing the first place team. You're chasing points, pal. No, do not do no. it. When, boy? When? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to get your act together? Chris Godwin yeah. is the number one wide receiver in fantasy football, yeah. and I suspect he will continue to do be such. Yeah, I love what Diggs did last week. Take the lump this bye week. You should have enough depth to survive one week. What are you doing? Don't ask that. Rocco, yeah. you're a fool. Don't ask that question again. No, yeah, do not. Okay, William writes, Matt Stafford or Jimmy Garoppolo? Oh, it hurts my heart. A lot Staff- of question marks this week. Staff- Stafford's I mean, my quarterback sit. Questions. This is Garoppolo, just based on the matchup. It's tough. I mean, to me, you can throw him in a hat and pull one out, but he basically he is my start of the week. Garoppolo is for these guys that um, may have had Breeze and been suffering through right. somebody else. Yeah, I mean, go Garoppolo. I mean, they're playing Washington. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the chances Sorry, of him no having a horrible Washington. game. Yeah, I mean, the, the chances of him having a horrible game are basically nil. Right. Okay, and finally, Sammy writes, blow it up. Oh, man, lots of everybody's It's about that time. And this is this is a um, somebody trying to to steal somebody oh, in my mind. But right. anyway, I was offered Melvin Gordon. For Devontae Adams, <laughs> I have Ingram, Mack, and Joe Mixon at running back. Then what the hell would you need with and Melvin Adams, Gordon? Kirk, Jeffrey, Ty Williams, and Marvin Jones at wide receiver? And <sighs> when, boy, when? <laughs> Are you going to get your act together? Here's what I want you to do. We're going to be quiet. And I want you to hit record or be, snip this out, uh, Sammy, for the guy that sent this to you. I want you to send him an audio response. Okay. All right? And what you're going to do, you're going to type in there, when it comes to you and I as trade partners, then I want you to plug this in. So say it with me, Sammy. When it comes to you and I as trade partners, All right, man, this shit's over with. it's over with. <laughs> no, are you high? Why would you even pass this along? What you should have done was send him back a picture of your genitals would have been the appropriate <laughs> response to this. Or per- perhaps your grundle area somewhere <laughs> down there. That is absurd. You don't need it. You got two great running backs. I, look, I know Devontae's been a disappointment. He's been banged up. But really, Melvin freaking Gordon? And, and even... Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. And even if Melvin Gordon was having a... Even a somewhat Melvin Gordonish type season, you you've got Ingram and Mac, yeah, and you would be giving up Devonte Adams. Yeah. That's crazy nonsense. I say. yeah, is that it? Boulder Dash. Boulder Dash. Yes. <laughs> I like it. That is it. All right. That is it. I don't even have any weird facts for well, you that's today. All right. I want to go watch the pit game anyhow. So let's do that. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Good luck to y'all. Hey, you can keep sending those questions in at Asylum Football on Twitter, asylumfootball at gmail.com. Rick will answer them right up till kickoff time. I don't have much else to say. Check it out. Notice he, he doesn't answer anything. Well, 
unless I'm in the bathroom. So if you want me talking to you while I'm on the john, I'm willing to do it. Good luck. Keep that impression in your mind all weekend. Until next time, we'll see you. Take care.